Hey everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome once again to my channel on YouTube called Chemistry Tutorials. In this channel, you'll find videos on various reactions in chemistry, especially in the case of organic chemistry. You'll find a lot of videos on IUPAC nomenclature of all types of organic compounds. And we're going to have lots of more videos on various types of reaction in all branches of chemistry. In the recent series, we've been doing reactions called the name reactions. And today it's the turn of benzoin condensation. In this video, we're going to look at what benzoin condensation is all about, in which type of reactions does it occur, what are the kind of reagents that we generally put to make these reactions happen, and what the mechanism is. So let's get started with benzoin condensation. So let's understand what benzoin condensation is. First, let's understand the figures that are drawn here. Uh, this atom, let me get the pen color right. Uh, this atom, the blue atom is carbon. It represents carbon atom. The white ones represent hydrogen atoms. The red one represents oxygen atom. So, as you can see, this is a benzene ring. The double bonds are not shown, but this is a benzene ring. And to that, you have this carbon attached. The carbon is attached to one hydrogen. And this carbon is attached to one oxygen. Obviously, it has to be attached with the double bond oxygen, otherwise the valency won't be satisfied. So, this is benzaldehyde. This is benzaldehyde. Now, let's look at the product. There's a benzene ring here. To that is attached this carbon atom. The carbon is atom, the carbon atom is attached to an H. It is attached to O, which is attached to an H. The carbon is attached to another carbon, attached to O. And this carbon is attached to another benzene ring, which means there is a double bond here. And this compound is known as benzoin. And this is what we're going to form in this reaction. So benzaldehyde forming benzoin and we're going to see how is this going to happen and we're going to look at the mechanism. So first, let's look at the reaction first. What is the reaction all about? When an aromatic aldehyde is heated, uh, rather treated with alcoholic KC and the final product is not a cyanohydrin, but alpha hydroxy aromatic ketone called benzoin. So basically what happens is you got two molecules of benzaldehyde combining in the presence of alcoholic and aqueous KCN and they combine and give rise to benzoin. Now, typically this should not be called as a benzoin condensation because condensation reactions are defined as those in which two molecules add to each other with the removal of a small molecule like a water molecule. In this particular reaction, nothing is removed. Basically, the two benzaldehydes are getting added. So, there's no way any a, a molecules eliminated. So it's not a typical condensation, rather it should be called an addition reaction. So the reaction is not a typical condensation reaction as condensation reactions are always characterized by the addition of two molecules with the elimination of a small molecule like water. The reaction is more appropriately called benzoin addition. Now this KCN can only do this kind of a reaction for aromatic aldehydes. For aliphatic aldehydes, you'll have to use stronger bases like N-hydrocyclic carbenes, which we'll discuss at the end of this uh, video. So when casein used, only aromatic aldehydes are added to form benzoin type products. For aliphatic amines, stronger bases like uh, N-hydrocyclic, uh, I think we need to change this. Uh, it's not 
अमीन्स इट्स एल्डिहाइड्स वी टॉक अबाउट एल्डिहाइड्स या दिस इज एल्डिहाइड्स सो फॉर एलिफेटिक एल्डिहाइड्स स्ट्रॉन्ग बेसिस लाइक एन हाइड्रोसाइक्लिक कार्बिन्स हैव टू बी यूज्ड एंड इन केस यू यूज केसीएन विद एल्डिहाइडिक अमीन्स यू विल गेट साइनोहाइड्रिन्स मीनिंग इफ यू टेक अ रिएक्शन लाइक दिस नॉर्मल एल्डिहाइडिक एल्डिहाइड you add cn minus in the presence of water you get cyano hydrin instead of anything like benzoin to make them convert into benzoin type products you got to use n heterocyclic carbenes that we're going to discuss now so let's get going and start working with the reactions yes there's one thing i want to talk about when ketones are used you get alpha alkoxy ketones now please understand first understand let's this understand this word alpha hydroxy aromatic ketone this is a ketone because the carbonyl carbon is attached to two carbons it is aromatic obviously and this is the alpha carbon this is the functional group this is the alpha carbon and there is a hydroxy in it alpha hydroxy aromatic ketone on the other hand if you use ketones that means just try and understand this basically what is happening is benzaldehyde is forming ph coh h c o p h if you use ketones instead then you end up getting alpha alkoxy ketones so instead of hydroxy you get alkoxy instead of this oh you'll get a ch3 here so basically one can assume that this h probably is the one that is shifting to this o and this if this were a, a ch3 or something and you will have ch3 sitting here so it's going to be alpha alkoxy ketones So let's look at the mechanism now. The mechanism looks like this. Step one is obviously the attack of cyanide ion acting as a nucleophile on the carbonyl carbon atom of benzaldehyde and driving the pi bond to oxygen atom. So there you have benzaldehyde cyanide ion attack the carbonyl carbon pi bond shifts to O and it becomes negatively charged. Step one. In step two, a water molecule comes, gives proton to this O minus, converting that into a cyanohydrin. So the second step, the negatively charged oxygen atom takes a proton from the solvent, and you get a cyanohydrin. So cyanohydrin is, is formed. Only thing is, it doesn't stay that way. It reacts further. That is because, remember. along with this a hydroxide is produced water has given the proton it will convert it will get converted to hydroxide now this h is pretty acidic that's because the negative charge on this carbon is going to be stabilized by the withdrawing minus r and minus i of cyanide minus r and minus i of the phenyl group so basically what is happening is this h is acidic enough for the oh minus to abstract it now remember for that the aromatic ring plays a very important role in stabilizing the negative charge that is why the reaction goes further in the case of benzaldehydes and doesn't go further in the case of normal aliphatic aldehydes if you use cyanide ion step 3 the strong base pulls the h removes the proton from the formal carbonyl carbon the negative charge on carbon atom is stabilized by both cn and the phenyl group so this oh minus picks up this proton this guy goes to carbon this bond and the carbon becomes negatively charged it's a carbon anion so in the next step this carbon anion is going to act as a nucleophile on another molecule of benzaldehyde in step 4 the carbon anion formed attacks on the molecule of benzaldehyde as a nucleophile on the carbonyl carbon atom and the pi bond is pushed to the oxygen atom so this is the benzaldehyde unreacted this is the intermediate the carbon anion this attacks as a nucleophile pi bond shifts to o 
and you get this this oxygen is this oxygen so now what happens is water comes and gives an h again to this o minus so in step 5 the negative charged oxygen atom takes a proton from the solvent same as before produces hydroxide ion along with it now this hydroxide ion can take the proton from either this h or this this o or this o it doesn't really matter now if it takes from here nothing actually is going to happen after that it will keep exchanging proton to and fro but if it takes a proton from here this negative charge has the ability to come back and make the cn leave because cn is not a very strong nucleophile and therefore a pretty good leaving group so in step 6 the strong base produced in the previous step removes the proton from the oxygen atom making it negatively charged so first it removes the proton or do not wonder why is it taking a proton only from that it could have taken the proton from this oxygen as well only thing is nothing is actually going to produce get produced by the removal of this h so we are only looking at the, the way the product is formed so in the last step the negatively charged oxygen atom pushes the cyanide ion out and thereby producing what is known as a benzoin now as can be seen it is not necessary that both molecules have to be of the same type we could use different types of benzaldehydes but of course an aromatic aldehyde is required but we can use different types of benzaldehydes and how that will happen is what we're going to see now uh, one thing that i wanted to probably show you and that is this was the carbon on which the cn attacked remember and look at the oxygen attached to that finally it is the carbon which has the carbonyl oxygen attached to it so the moral of the story is that if the cyanide attacks a benzaldehyde a particular benzaldehyde or a particular carbonyl carbon it is that carbon which is likely to become the c double bond o in the product so now let's look at what is known as cross benzoin so i got two benzaldehydes but they're different one has nitro group so we need to understand what the product is Now, there are two possibilities one is the benzaldehyde which doesn't have any substituent in it would be the c double bond o and the one with the nitro group is the one that would contain the oh or the option could be that the nitro group benzene ring that contains c double bond o and the other benzene is unsubstituted so we need to guess which one is formed so i want you to take your time remember the rate determining step is the formation of the carbon anion is the reaction where the hydroxide base comes and takes the h from the carbon so you need to figure out where does the carbon anion become stable and we can clearly see that in this case since you have a nitro group sitting here this carbon which will eventually become oh if this becomes um let me see you got a carbon here the cyanide okay now this is not carb the h this is cyanide if this becomes negative i think this is going to be more stable than if the negative were to come on this carbon because nitrogen is a withdrawing group uh, no2 is a withdrawing group and that would stabilize the negative charge and the remember the carbon on which the cn sits is the one which will finally become the carbonyl carbon so it is this product which is expected to form and that exactly is what happens let's try one more let's take an aromatic and an aliphatic mix it now in this case we got to use special bases called heter n heterocyclic 
carbenes and this is how they look like n heterocyclic carbenes this is a carbene and remember the nitrogen here has a lone pair it can form a coordinate bond and this carbon becomes negatively charged it's a very strong base and is able to pull the h even from aliphatic amines uh, sorry aliphatic aldehydes in spite of the fact that the negative charge on these will not get stabilized see if the anion is not stable enough to form it is going to be a weak proton donor if pro if giving proton and forming an anion is difficult then it's going to be a weak proton donor as weak the proton donor is you need a very very strong base but even in this case remember what happens is the negative charge is much more stable on the carbon which contains the benzene ring and therefore this is the one which will finally turn into the carbonyl carbon and the hydroxyl group sits on the carbonyl carbon of the aliphatic aldehyde let's try one more and again here what happens is the aromatic part is the one which will become the double bond o and the aliphatic one becomes h but since it is intramolecular you expect a ring to form basically what will happen is the base attacks here the pi bond shifts to o so this would become o negative h and base and you got 1 2 and a carbonyl carbon here then the base just come here and then there is the solvent base which picks up uh, which gives the h to this water gives h to this then the solvent base comes and picks this h the negative here is stable and this negative is going to attack this carbon and the pi bond will shift to o so i wanted to draw this properly and you will be able to get the correct product in this case so in this case the product looks like this this carbon minus this becomes oh and you get a six member ring so that's about the benzoin condensation i hope you were able to understand benzoin condensation through this video if you need if you require please go through the video once again or probably as many times as you want and if you have any doubts queries questions uh, anything that you would like to comment on please drop them in the comment section below and do not forget to subscribe to my channel on chemistry tutorials you'll get more videos of this kind and the right time you will get the intimation therefore this is a very important channel from the point of view of chemistry students and chemistry teachers So I thank all of you for watching this video and we'll come with some more videos very soon thank you so much for watching